5,000 tons of steel, 1 billion parts from 48 states, as long as the Empire State Building is tall. America's newest super aircraft carrier about to be christened today. Rising 20 stories above the waterline, she will carry 5,700 of America's best, and she is the only carrier named for a living president, the USS Ronald Reagan. So here in Virginia Beach, at the Naval Amphibious Base at Little Creek, literally just an aircraft carrier away from where former First Lady Nancy Reagan and President Bush will christen the super aircraft carrier, the USS Ronald Reagan, well, just about now. Obviously, we can't be there. We've got some business to attend to here, but I'm reminded what President Bush's Chief of Staff, Andrew Card, said this week when confronted about the administration working too long, those 16 to 18-hour days. He said, hey, get a life, go to a movie, go bowling. So we are. It's the battle at Little Creek. Today, the battle at Little Creek will continue. Our opening matchup, a former rookie of the year, fresh off of victory number nine. The number one ranked player in the world. Please welcome Jason Couch. First opponent is a former rookie of the year, fresh off of victory number nine, currently ranked number one in the world from Claremont, Florida, Jason Couch. Our next matchup, our first professional, he has two titles overall. He hails from Lakewood, Florida, Steve Wilson. Our final professional was a collegiate All-American at San Jose State, a high of second place on the national tour. He's a man of steel. Please welcome Tony Reyes. Live from the Navy's best and biggest amphibious base around the world, we'd like to say hello and welcome to the battle at Little Creek. We've had four that have survived, Hi everybody, along with PBA Hall of Famer Dave Ozio. We've got a sellout crowd. They've been sold out here for about two weeks now. Whoever it was that said all the world's a stage, well, they knew what they were talking about. Last week, we were at the Villages outside under the Florida sunshine. And when you talk about the stage, Dave, you and the other Hall of Famers here, why you love to get up on it and perform in front of all these folks. This was an awesome, awesome event. The crowds were electrifying. These players get up when they bowl in a venue like this. They just absolutely look forward to it. So I expect great things to happen today. Everybody's talked about the road to the Final Four, March Madness, if you will. We've had our version here at Little Creek all week long, and four have survived. Well, the format this week was extremely different. We had 32 of the best players in the world that went through a single elimination format. They, want, they had to bowl five games. The best of three, best of five got into today's round today. So it was a very tough competition, and they had some excellent matches. Well, before we say, gentlemen, start your engines, what about the lane conditions? How's the oil out there? Different this week. We bowled on a 40-foot pattern. 32-foot oil, buffed out to 42-foot, gutter to gutter with a slight crown in the middle. The big problem this week lied in the fact that the oil deteriorated very rapidly, which caused the players to have to move around a lot and make quick decisions. We'll see how that comes into play today. So outside on this, the Reagan's 49th wedding anniversary, Nancy Reagan is uh, christening, if you will, the newest super aircraft carrier, the Ronald Reagan, and inside four have survived with two of those. Well, here's the first ever PBA sideline reporter. It's not your father's PBA. Anymore. Let's welcome back Jan Schmidt. Jan? Thanks, Jim. And I'm here with Jason Couch and Brian Himmler. And guys, you're bowling on opposite sides of the lane. So we're going to ask you to tell a few secrets, but it shouldn't affect your competition. Jason, how do you plan to play and what ball and what line are you going to play? Well, I'm using a ball that I threw all week. I'm very comfortable where I'm at. Uh, they're a little tighter than they have been all week, but I'm sure that uh, I'll just move a little left and stay confident. Well, Brian, he thinks they're pretty close. He out averaged you by 11 pins this week. Do you plan to do any changes to compensate? Well, the ball I used last night, I shot 245, 277. So I feel pretty confident with my ball reaction. It's going to be a great match. Was that a different ball than used earlier in the week? Yeah, I barely skidded through the first few rounds, and they were nail biters, and then the cruise control was on last night. 
Well, you guys are friends, and Jason, you said you might start intimidation from the beginning. You, you have any change of mind on that? Uh, me and Brian have bowled against each other since we were 15 years old, and uh, I better get on top of him early and get, it, get intimidated and get in his face. Get it on. It looks like the match is on. Thanks, guys. Back to you, Jim. They've been friends for a long time, but not today. The battle at Little Creek. We are live here in Virginia Beach, and we've got match number one coming up when we come back to Rockwell Hall. Glad you're on board. The best of the PBA. Here, the battle at Little Creek. Steve Wilson out of Lake Worth, Florida. The right-hander up against another right-hander from San Jose, California. Tony Reyes. <laughs> That'll be coming up. But meanwhile, these guys that have battled each other, well, since junior bowling. Jason Couch, he was last week's winner at the Villages. And one of the things that he told us last week he wants to do, and he wants to do it again here today, is get out of the box quickly and be aggressive. Jason's big onus is getting too pumped up out of the gate and throwing it too hard. He has not done that right there. He is here to play. He says, I have learned a lot about this game and I'm here to make some. Now this is how Himmler got here. Brian Himmler defeated Justin Romick 3-2. He defeated the awesome Pete Weber 2-up and also the superstar from Finland, Mika Koivuemi. Great player, and I'll tell you what, he had a hard road to hoe there to get to this point. Last win came back in 99. He was joking last night when he said, you know, time flies. But he does feel the pressure to get back into the winner's circle. Said he's due, and he could use a couple of breaks. He's made a lot of game changes with his touch. He's practiced a lot to really be sensitive as to what the ball does on the lane in order to get it to the pocket consistently and it's starting to show up week after week. Well, he didn't definitely didn't want to do that right there. He wanted to just clip the three pin on the right side and deflect the ball into the 10. Didn't happen, so he's currently down in the match by 21 pins. As David Ozio just said, down by those 21 pins and a bad beginning for the Chief. Now, if you remember right, the, the scoring system this week is a max plus minus off of 30 pins. That will mean that it is the maximum amount of score that these players can bowl for the game. If a player starts with a turkey and the other player starts with a spare double, he is currently 10 pins down because the top player with three in a row can bowl 300. The bottom player can bowl 290 maximum. from last week. He had it all together, and usually when you come off of a win, you're going to carry it into the next week. And so Jason's been pumped up all week. He had some fantastic finishes in matches that got him to this point. And I'll tell you what, I don't see him letting off the gas today at all. Well, and let's go back about seven days ago. In the winner's presentation last week down at the Villages, outside in Florida, under the sunshine, he said it was a tip, some advice that you had given him in the semifinals that helped him out. Right. I bowl with these guys on a week-in, week-out basis, and that is his biggest downfall, is getting too pumped up too early. And he has got his emotions in check right now, which keeps his ball speed down a little bit. Now, the major thing that was a contributing factor to his success this week is he likes to throw the ball harder. And in this case, it fits his game more perfectly, and he can make better shots to it. Great, the Chief. great shot by Chief there. You notice he let the ball out a little bit wider, trusted it. The one before he didn't trust, the ball rolled up into the head pin. There is no help on this lane to help these guys score. This is by great shots and raw talent, and that's what it's going to take to win these matches today. One of the things that Brian was talking about, his confidence as he has moved up the ladder all week long. 
his confidence is probably as best I've ever seen it because he's been performing better and better and better as the weeks have gone on. It's kind of a shame this is the last week because if he doesn't win here today, he can win here pretty quick. All right, he's ready to go now. He says, I am zeroed in. I got away with one bad shot. I'm going to let it go. I'm here to go. This guy wants the crowd back. He wants them on his side. He's going to do everything he can to entertain these people. This will motivate him, lift his spirits, and try to get him back in this match. to throw an excellent shot, this guy is qualified. Kind of got in his buddy's face there a little bit, glared at him. These guys are the best of friends, but I'm going to tell you what, today it's work, it's business, it's my bills need to be paid, I don't care about you. in round one. Danny Wiseman did it. Round number two. An extra $10,000 if you do it on TV. And do not discount that possibility today with Jason Couch. The lanes were absolutely favorable. This is the most fair condition right to left I have ever seen in the history of the PBA. Excellent pitch. Brad Himmler. Brian's dad cheering the sun on here. Well, Brian has positioned himself here to stay in the match. If he, long as he keeps the accelerator down, he's going to stay on Jason's heels, and that's what he has to do to maintain the level of performance he's going to take to beat Jason Couch. Four in a row for the Chief after leaving the first frame open. And he almost got it. The messenger, the one pin, came off the wall, rolled ever so softly right in front of the 10 pin and into the gutter. I'm going to tell you what, he was begging for it to hit it. When you win, when you're due, what percent is luck? How many breaks do you get over the course of the frames? Well, I don't know if I call it luck. Pure execution creates the luck, so to speak. And if you're right on top of your game, you don't have to worry about those things. Well, we are here, the Battle of Little Creek, on. there is Rudy, you knew him as the uh, Navy SEAL of the Survivor. He joins UBA welterweights for a workout in Rockwell Hall. The Virginia Beach resident and Rockwell Hall regular spotted for Jeff Lizzie and then took a turn on the machine. And under Rudy's watchful eye, well, it was Monticelli taking on the machine as part of a workout to remember right here at the Naval Base. It's five in a row. What are you going to do to get the crowd back on your side? Well, I've seen Jason shoot 230 with the front five before, and I'm going to be bringing 258, so I'll be showing him to the door. Well, that answers that. Let's get to it. I think he got Jason's attention just then. Who's going to show who to the door, pal? Look at that determination. Well, does that work at a, as a negative to Jason, or is it a lift positive for him to just get geared up and go? Notice he's taking a deep breath there. He wants to be poised to throw the best shot that he can. So we're going to see how the tail works out. Seven out of nine as a tournament leader. That could have been the negative I'm alluding to right there. Sometimes it wears on the psyche to end up throwing a bad shot. Jason got that ball clearly inside a target, and there's really no hold area here. These guys depend on great shots. In this case here, Jason has to just clip the two pin on the left-hand side, slide the two over into the six. The six will make the ten. Listen to the crowd go up if he picks this one up.
Himmler open in the first. And the first mistake for the last week's winner at the Villages. Here's how Jason's been playing the right-hand lane. He told me he wanted to go more down the boards today because the lanes were a little bit tighter on the left versus all week. So he's keeping the he's keeping the shot tight. Now, look at this last shot. He's got it in a little bit, and he was probably a little bit slower. That runs the ball into the nose with this big split, open frame. Now he's looking at a different possibility here. Jason right now up by three pins. Right back to four. Well, he cannot get down on himself and he cannot let up. He has to keep the pressure on Brian at all costs. If Brian gets up and falters, well, that's going to swing the game back over again. Keller right told us last night if there's been a downside to his week, he's been just a little bit off on his foot speed. And that is his nemesis. When he gets under pressure a lot of times, he'll start running even faster to the foul line and throw the ball harder. And in most cases, what happens is it equals to a bad shot. That shot right there, he got inside a target a little bit. The ball rolled up a little too high on the head pin, pushes the two pin around the four, leaving the four pin. Pretty routine spare for Brian. He's going to throw hard at it with the straighter ball, and no problem. Well, if you're a high-average bowler looking for a true test of your skills, you might want to check out the new sport bowling program being offered by the American Bowling Congress and the Women's International Bowling Congress as well. Sport bowling offers the most challenging of lane conditions to today's bowlers. So, when you join a league this fall, ask your local center if they're participating in the sport bowling program. Brian's up on the left lane now, 14 pins down, and... He needs a strike here to set a foundation for him to close out the game. The most he can bowl is 247, but Jason can have 261. He wants a shot right here. He keeps it in real tight to his ankle and just gets his hand to go all the way around the ball. A lot of revolutions can allow him to throw it farther to the right and suck it back up into the pocket. Yeah, that's what he wants. He wants this thing to go down. So much for friendships and a day like this with a championship on the line. No friendships. Not in a match like this. You notice some subtle changes that Jason made during the week, during match play, during the single elimination to make it this far. What did you pick up? Well, he knew from last week on a lot longer oil pattern, a lot heavier oil pattern, that he had to throw the slow last week. To this week, he's up to speed, tightened up his line because he wanted pin carry, which he didn't get right there in leaving the seven pin. And that's what's led him to this point right here is excellent pin carry. Couch down by six after five strikes in a row. He should just shrug that one off, forget about it, it's over with, I have to look to the future. The best he can possibly bowl is 241, Brian can have 247, so we still have plenty of game here. Speaking of battles, look at that one. Well, focus is the name of the shot right here for Jason Couch. No mental mistake can happen here, he needs a strike. Excellent reaction by Jason Couch. He sends the messenger across with some serious velocity to take that seven pin out. He is ready to get this match over and walk away winner. And another look. Keep an eye the upper left-hand corner. Of just power personified. Look at that one. Well, actually, it bumped the five pin. The one hit the five, drove the five pin over into the seven pin. Delayed reaction fall. Big letdown for Brian Himmler right there. That was an excellent pitch. He was all over it. The only thing I could see on that shot is he got off of it just a little bit quick. Waiting in the wings, of course, we've got Steve Wilson, Tony Reyes. There's Brian's dad again, Brad Himmler. Of course, they've got a little good-natured uh, needling that they do to each other because sometimes Couch will get in his face and just call out the name Brad, right? Well, they had this ongoing thing out on tour when things don't go right. Or they're in each other's face. They relate to Brad, and they have a little, little thing they jab at each other based off of that. Go, 
Right now, Brian is 14 pins down. The best he can bowl is 227. Brian, Jason Couch can have 241. Brian can have 227. Depends on what Himmler does. He did not want that one to get away from him because it's ever so important to get three strikes in the 10th here because you just don't know what's going to happen in the 10th frame for Jason Couch. I'm sure he's going to channel all his thought process into an excellent shot right here. He cannot let this one get away. Bingo. Perfect shot. And he trusted it to the right a little bit with that big, powerful hand he has. The ball circled back perfectly, just as high flush as could be. Jason looked like he just missed a three-footer for par. Well, he's kicked all the pressure back onto Jason Couch now. Now he has to get up in the 10th frame to perform this and create his, you know, destiny right here. Did you see the uh, intenseness on his face? And another one. What a way to finish up after leaving the first wide open. Well, Brian Himmler said about this format of match play and single elimination, he likened it to Lotto or Megabucks. He might have cashed in. Well, it's a sprinter's format this week. You didn't have time to think. You got up and won your matches as quickly as possible. Everybody wanted to go 3-0 and and get their opponents out of the way and move on to the next round. A lot of cases that happened. A lot of cases it didn't. this match down so this match is not over by any means look at this shot right here he trusted it out close to the gutter the ball rolls back really heavy and just gets into the perfect spot of the pocket and look at this his emotion like take some of that <laughs> 227 Himmler can only sit and watch well the week's on the line for Brian right here on this shot he's worked hard to get to this position and he's pulled incredibly well so Whatever happens, he is a great champion. No hesitation there as he just reels it to the gutter with a little bit of authority and says, buddy, you're gone for the week. Jason Couch, last week's winner at the Villages, Brian Himmler, 227. And when we come right back, David Ozio will tell you why in the world these guys are so good, the best the PBA has to offer. These guys so good, in a word, adaptability. Moving from town to town, center to center, and lane to lane, the pro bowler encounters changing lane surfaces, changing approaches, and even changing weather all have a serious impact on his ability to perform and force him to adapt his game and his bowling equipment to suit the environment. This week's battle at Little Creek has been a microcosm of what PBA athletes face as the tour crosses the country. While the players bowled pro-ams and practiced in the Little Creek Bowling Center with its synthetic lanes and wood approaches, they competed in Rockwell Hall with its synthetic lanes and synthetic approaches. Here you can see Jason at the practice center. He changes his shoes to establish the perfect leverage, coupled with the reactive ball from a deep inside angle to maintain proper pocket entry. Now in Rockwell Hall, where the approaches are synthetic and much more slippery, he adjusts his footwear in a search for the perfect pattern, slide pattern. The pros know right away from experience what combination to go to. They can't afford a mistake that can cost them the title. Now he picks up the same ball, plays the same line as the practice center. Let's see the result. 
So Jason will change balls, move to a different line, and put the pieces of the puzzle together. Well, the winter schedule here on ESPN, the winter tour of the PBA's best, has been a dandy. It concludes here later this afternoon. But let's, uh, well, take you back. A little flashback. The PBA began its 2001 winter season in Reno, Nevada, for the national senior doubles. Finland's Mika Kobunemi and Yunichi Yajima of Japan made the most of their pairing, ripping through three matches and reaching the title match. The 2000 Player of the Year, Parker Bone, was waiting along with Ron Morton. Morton began the match with a strike, and Parker Bone closed it out in style and shared in Morton's first PBA title. The second stop on the winter tour, Daly City, California, and it featured a duel between two PBA greats in the final. Mike Albee has always applied the pressure early. Jason Couch, a star in his own right, showed his respect for his childhood hero. Hall of Fame? Not in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> so once again, Mike Albee delivered. His 27th career PBA title moved him into fourth on the all-time list. The tour rolled on to the Orleans Casino Open in Las Vegas, the city of glitter and gold. And there, Jeff Lizzie jumped out to the lead in the title match with a trio of strikes. Ryan Schaefer, the defending champion, responded with three strikes of his own. So needing a strike and an eight count, Lizzie came up short in agonizing fashion. For Schaefer, career title number three. The PBA National Championship represented the first major of the season. Jeff Lizzie, so disappointed the week before, bounced back and showed his heart in reaching the title match. Unfortunately, Jeff ran into Walter Ray Williams Jr. And as usual, he was relentless. Two weeks and two seconds for Lizzie. For Walter Ray, his third career victory and a major three wins in the PBA's last 11 events. The Winter Tour's next stop, Latham, New York. Chris Barnes wound up the number five qualifier and he battled his way up the ladder all the way to the title match. Meanwhile, Parker Bone was not prepared to play just the gracious host. You see, he had some loyal supporters to please. Barnes, winless in his last 15 TV appearances, found the channel in the ninth. Parker just needed to keep the ball in play, and he did exactly that, becoming the first man to win a title with his name attached to it. The inaugural Tar Heel Open was next for the PBA's finest. An all Southpaw final resulted. The title match, a battle of Floridians. Second seed Ricky Ward and Jason Couch, the tournament leader. With nothing but strikes in frames six through 10, Ward returned to the winner's circle for the first time since 1999. And just last week, the tour moved under the bright Florida sunshine, the Villages in Florida. The PBA's second ever outdoor final produced a dramatic title match. Chris Barnes kept his game clean through the eighth frame. But Jason Couch thrilled the hometown crowd with big shot after big shot. And Jason grabbed his first title of the winter season. Yeah! The home of the Atlantic Fleet's amphibious forces, and Chris Barnes had the opportunity to see part of it up close. Riding one of the Navy's 46 Little Creek-based landing crafts, Chris clipped along at over 50 knots with a crew that included one of his fans. The newest of the Navy's landing craft, capable of carrying up to 75 tons of tanks, vehicles, or troops from all over the horizon onto over 70% of the world's beaches. Talk about reach, flying inches just above the water. Chris Barnes literally hit the beach with the Navy's finest. Well, we talked about the first time that we've got a PBA sideline reporter. She is pretty, she is smart, and she is knowledgeable. Here again is Jan Schmidt. Thanks, Jim. Tony, you talked about this format. You said you like it better than the long format. Why? 
Uh, just because, you know, out here you need experience. Uh, it's a very, um, a, during the regular format, it's a four or five day experience. And over time, you know, lanes change and everything. I'm not, first, you know, a couple days I've been, you know, used to it out here. But the last couple days have been my hard times. And out here right now is basically all in one shot, you know, a couple games and crapshoot kind of. But you know, it's fun. How do you feel right now? Feeling great. Feeling great. Steve, you said that you never get pumped up for TV, but you might change that tonight. What are your plans? Well, normally I'm a laid-back type bowler, and I try to keep my emotions in check. shot right there. Confidence is starting to come back. He just had excellent poise on that shot. Now Steve Wilson right here, he's playing the lanes down the boards. Very little head belly. He's got a lot of heavy roll on it. He stays real solid at the foul line, which keeps the ball on a perfect line. He's playing this lane just a little bit tighter. The ball is a little bit more to the right, comes into the pocket just a little bit later. So he's going to have to watch that left lane for a possible blowout 7-10. Fouled on the first ball. I don't see that anywhere here on the scoreboard anyway. 
It's his second ball. He did foul on the first. We didn't catch that right there, but Tony did foul on the first shot. And I, ironically enough, I had someone come up to me just before the telecast and said that are the foul lights on. They had been watching from the side where the crowd is all week, and they said Tony fouled a lot of times this week. Nobody said anything. Well, I find that kind of strange. Great shot by Steve Wilson. I'm going to tell you what, that takes a lot of pressure off of him right there. Wow, that's a serious hit for Tony Reyes. I'm sure he's going to look back at this one and just say, oh, I just can't believe that happened. Funny talking to Steve last night about pressure and about nerves, and he said, yeah, all week long in this single elimination match play format, he said he's been nervous in the first game. Well, guess what? Here in the semifinal, you only get one game. Well, it's much different than what it was all week. You have one shot here, and that's it. And I'm going to tell you, he's a hurting unit right now. Well, now it's gut check time for the 27-year-old right-hander out of San Jose, California, Tony Reyes. Win, lose, or draw, we're chalking today up his experience. Tony is one of the future players of the PBA. He needs this experience badly. And he's going to learn a lot of lessons today from this, no matter whatever happens. He can possibly strike out here for 232. So, 237. 237, I'm sorry, 237, and that could still possibly get there. So, you know what? It's not over till it's over. All right. Tony's wife, Shannon, right there. A little nervous time for her. She's the second telecast, as you know, and you talk about the experience. Ask him last night what it would mean to him were he to win. He just laughed. He said, that would be huge. He said, but it would prove that I can actually make it out here. I mean, there is an indoctrination you guys go through. Some players are still 10 years that they haven't won yet. So, I mean, he has a lot, he really has a lot to prove to himself. straw that broke the camel's back. He thought he was on line here. He got his legs underneath him, and the 4-9 come up and bit him. Even if he picks this up, it's going to be still a tough road to win this match. Now, he's going to try to slide the 4-pin over into the 9-pin. He'll clip it on the left-hand side, send the 4 into the 9. He trusted it over there, but just didn't quite get it. Just might be a little nervous now. Well, meanwhile, waiting in the wings, Jason Couch gets the winner. Well, Jason and Steve are also good friends, too. A lot of these players out here are, so I don't think that will be a deciding factor in this. I know one thing, Steve Wilson will have a dance ball, I can promise you that. Sherry Wilson, Steve's wife alongside, along with daughter Sarah. Why they uh, travel the country in a motorhome. A lot of the bowlers do that. Kind of a family affair, huh? Ten years, I did the same thing. He was pretty honest last night. Said he's been struggling the last year or so. Well, he's had help from Dave Davis down in Florida, who helped him with his game to try to, try to get him back on the road to success. Steve said that his posture was altered to put him into a stronger athletic position that would create better leverage at the bottom of the swing. And that's what this game is really about. If you do not have the proper leverage, the ball roll is not going to be what you want it to be when it gets to the pins. Steve Wilson, Tony Reyes matched up, and the two wives are side by side. Shannon Reyes and Sherry Wilson both cheering their husbands on, hoping to advance here in the battle at Little Creek. Back live, Rockwell Hall, the naval amphibious fake Little Creek, Virginia Beach, Virginia, the last two for this man, Tony Reyes, a strike on four. 
But then some problems over on the third lane. He got the ball right on the fifth board is what he's looking at. On this lane here, notice he cuffed it a little bit. Got his thumb down, got the ball just ever so slightly left the target. The ball read the lane a little sooner and hits a little bit too high for the 4-9. Well, this by no means was Tony's performance this week. Hey, he had the great match against Norm Duke, last year's player of the year. What a finish. The premier match of the entire week. It went down to the fifth game. Both were 2-2 going in. Tony had to get up in the ninth and tenth frame and strike out both to win the game by one pin to advance to today. He totally had the crowd on their feet and just hooting and hollering. Second in the voting back in 99 to the PBA Rookie of the Year, Paul Fleming. Well, Tony right here has a very short approach. Everything's very compact. Notice his push away sets out a little bit to the right. So if he doesn't keep a good touch on that, see that ball tucked in behind his back right there? What'll happen with a lot of times is, is that if you get that ball tucked in too far to the right, it's gonna hook too far back to the left and go in the nose. Well, a lot of TV sets back in San Jose watching ESPN because Tony is a part owner of the one-stop bowling shop back there in Oak Ridge Lanes, pulling for him to win his first PBA title. It won't be this week, but certainly when you hit that fall schedule coming up in September, he'll be right back in action again, optimistic huh? and a little more experienced. Tony will be heard from again because he is a good, good player in his own right, has to work at being a great player, and I think everyone out here has to go through that battle. They have been sold out for over a week. Yes. Steve Wilson is now on cruise control. He is setting himself up for the match against Jason, and he wants to really get a feel for the lanes. And um, my guess is right now he's moved a little bit to the left to check out what he's got to work with. Well, let's talk a little bit about that match with Jason Couch, because as you know, we were back together at the Villages a week ago when Jason won for the ninth time. If Jason Couch were to win here, it would be PBA title number 10. And that kind of puts you uh, in some interesting category, if not for the Oscar, certainly a Hall of Fame. Well, uh, I do predict he will be a Hall of Fame candidate in the future, but also it locks you into the TSC for, as an exemption, means you only have to bowl half the tournaments from now on in order to get that. The right-hander, 32 years of age out of Lake Worth, Florida, so a couple of Floridians doing battle in the finals here, the battle at Little Creek. Jason Couch and Steve Wilson. Numbers wise, it is over. Wilson is the winner and Tony is out. Tony's just going to go through the motions right here and just try to finish out with some great shots. That's all he wants to do to really tell himself that, you know, I did a great job this week. That's what he was looking for. How about a little smile and a pat on the back? He still made it to the final four, Tony Reyes. Well, we talked about the other round of eight and some great finishes. Chris Barnes, I tell you, he's high on my list as one of the best players in the world. Jason Hurd had a tough night. Pete Weber. Pete Weber, Brian Voss also. Brian Voss is a tremendous player. I just love his game. Brian had a 300 game this week. All right, Danny, Danny Wiseman also had a 300 game, and he's here to stay for a long time. And, of course, the man that won in Toledo, won another major, Hall of Famer, Walter Ray Williams, Jr. I think he's headed out to play some golf tomorrow. Now, Ryan Schaefer was ranked number one going into last week, and he dropped out this week. And also, Amleto Monticelli, the Venezuelan hot cake, he uh, got, got beat in the first round also. So there was some really upsets. The reigning PBA Player of the Year loves this type of format. Unfortunately, Storm and Norman got beat in the first round by Tony Reyes. Parker Bone, an upset there, getting ousted out by Brian Smith, and Mike Albee, a loser to Mark Mosabi. His success so far this year caught the eye of the fans as he became the first player in PBA history to earn an entry into an event by vote of the fans. It took a little bit of a different route, and earlier this week, why Jan Schmidt caught up to Mike. 
It's Saturday morning, and we're down to the top 16. I'm here with Mike Albee. Mike, normally you bowl your way into match play, but this week a little different. You were voted in by your fans via the Internet, receiving 48%. What do you want to say to those fans? Well, thank you very much to the fans, uh, my family and friends, for uh, giving me the opportunity to come here and bowl. Well, it's largely accepted that the Internet is very oriented to the kids. Now, I don't want to call you old, Mike, but, hey, you've been out here 22 years. How do you explain your popularity with the kids? Well, you know, we've been doing the Mike Albee Youth League for several years in Indianapolis, and I used to be able to go through and say, you know, I'm not much older than the kids, but uh, we can't use that line anymore. But I feel like that, uh, you know, I can relate to the kids pretty good. You were quoted in an article as saying you're friendly, approachable, and intense. How do you combine all of those qualities? Well, when you're on the lanes, you try to flip a switch and just become very narrow-minded and intense and really work hard on the bowling part. When it's over, you flip the switch off and uh, you become a human being again and just go out there and, and treat people the way you want to be treated. Well, those are great qualities to vote for, but you have to tell me, did you do any lobbying to win this? Well, we had a pretty good network working, especially with uh, my son CJ's hockey team and his friends, and uh, they did a great job out there, uh, you know, pounding the pavement for me. Did it take any bribes? Well, when we get home, we'll see how many pizza parties and bowling parties we have to have. <laughs> well, just goes to show the bowling fans are very knowledgeable voting for a great person and a great athlete. Congratulations, Mike, and good luck in the fall. Thanks, Jan. Avid hockey fan, as is his son. So there's your champion of that match with Tony Rest, Steve Wilson, the young man from Lake Worth, Florida. Steve into the finals against Jason Couch. They have never faced each other on TV before. The championship up for grabs at the Battle at Little Creek. And when we come right back, a player profile, Ryan Boss. I grew up in Anchorage, Alaska. My dad owned a bowling center. Uh, I started when I was six years old. Uh, he owned a center for about four years, and uh, thus we became a bowling family. My whole family bowls. When I was a senior in high school, I uh, gave up my amateur status, and I bowled in leagues where I was going to be earning money. And that year, I ended up winning um, an all events title. We have a state tournament. And that qualified me for a nationwide tournament. Um, and I think that was the year. That was the year when, you know, I, I, I was making good money as a senior in high school. That was, uh, it, it was pretty good money for a kid. So I joined the service. And I had a four-year tenure in the service. Uh, while I was in the service, I won All-Army Champion for two years. But I also made real good money. And I didn't like being in the Army. As, as good as the Army was for me. And it really was. I don't think I'd be where I'm at right now if it wasn't for the uh, what the service did for me. When I was in the service, um, uh, we traveled to different countries while I was stationed in Germany. And the one thing that stands out in my mind is when we, we'd go to a tournament in Zurich, Switzerland, and here we would have we'd have Italians and we'd have uh, Germans and the French and the Swedes and everybody in this one bowling center. And it was all because of, of, of knocking down pins. A break in the action here at the Battle at Little Creek. So we get a chance to introduce the new commissioner of the new PBA, if you will, Mr. Ian Hamilton, who's been on board since about September. No question since that time. It seems like a major announcement every 30 days or so from either Akron or Seattle. Thank you, Jim. Uh, we've, there's been a lot that's had to happen since we started in September. And when we got started, we identified four areas that we had to fix right away. One was schedule. Nobody knows when bowling season is. Everybody knows when baseball season is. Everybody knows when basketball season, but nobody knows when bowling season is. So we identified September through March as being bowling season with a break in December. Secondly was our television show, that appointment television was critical to the viewer. The viewer needed to know when they could find bowling on TV. So going forward, our goal is to have appointment television. The third thing was PBA.com. Our website as a destination for the fans need to be up to the level of all the other Major League Sports franchises. And then the fourth thing is to continue to make noise. We've gotten a lot of great press. The combination of the Microsoft background of the owners, the Nike background of the new management team, it seems to be something that's very newsworthy. And we have to continue to build on that. Now we have to focus on the players and continue to make noise about them. In that vein, your background extensively out of tennis. I'm amstedextrous, so I've been all over the place. But it seems to me that one of the things you want to 
to do is tell more stories about some athletes that you've discovered to be very, very approachable. Dimensionalizing athletes, telling the stories about the athletes is really what makes the connection with the consumer. We had to change our format starting in January from an eight-man final to a five-man final so that it gave us the time on the show to tell the stories, to do the player profiles, to let people know who these athletes are, because people really want to know what they're like off the field. We'll end the way we started then, Commissioner. More news yet to be made. More news yet to be made. We have a lot of good news to report. Hopefully in the next few weeks, Jim, you and I are going to be in New York making a major announcement. I can only hope that we get there. Talk about excitement. They've been sold out here last week at the Villages. Final score, Wilson advances. So the championship, the battle at Little Creek Live. Jason Couch, can he win for the 10th time and maybe make it into the Hall of Fame? biggest and the best in the world. It's home to our finest amphibious forces and the Atlantic fleet. We are live. Rockwell Hall, the naval amphibious base, the Battle of Little Creek in the finals, and it will be a battle. I think the toughest match might be behind Jason Couch. I mean, we can talk all we want to as you take a look at the success factor. We talked about it last night, lanes three and four. Well, look what he's done here. He's gotten quite a few strikes. I mean, nine total with very few miscues. And I'm not 100% sure that that statement by Brian Himmler didn't create the miscue. He loved lanes one and two during the qualifying. Said if there was a downside, it would be three and four. And you were quick to yell across the room. <laughs> Adaptation. Well, adaptation. You're a star that you are. You better conform to what you've got to work with. Meanwhile, Steve, four and four on three and four. Well, Steve actually hit the pocket quite a bit in that game, and he got tapped a couple of times. And so I predict there'll be a good match this game. There'll be some two decent scores here. I don't know who will win. Well, Steve's not intimidated by Jason whatsoever. He gets up and just throws an absolute great shot. So he's going to stick it right back into space and say, I'm going to give you all you can handle. With his last victory in 96 at Grand Prairie, Texas, what's really on the line for him today were he to win? Mentally, to get him back in the game, earn the respect of the players, too, that, you know, he's still a force to be dealt with out here. I think we all go through that. But he wants to, in his own mind, know that he still has it. And right, it's going to take some breaks to achieve that. Look at all the pins that piled up over there on the seven pin, but yet did not touch it. And a lot of times the players just kind of look at that and say, wow, what a bad break. So he can't let that bother him. Pick his ball up, focus on the spare, pick it up, and go into the next frame. say that Steve is unemotional. He is very intense, but certainly by comparison with the fiery Jason Couch, and will that lack of emotion or lack of apparent emotion help or hurt Steve up against this guy? I say it hurts him. I don't think he lifts himself up to an elevation that will cause him to throw great shots on a, a just a shot after shot basis. Jason does. This is a sprint, mind you, and Jason's going to be totally focused on every shot. Well, we got a game here. Jason, and this might be what I've been talking about earlier, threw it just a little bit too firm. Ball comes in a little bit late behind the head pin, catches it just a little bit light, and sends a four pin into the trench, not touching the seven. Asked him last night to define pressure. He just laughed. He said, wait, you asked me that last week in Florida. And I said, well, it's a different week. And he said, okay, this week's format is pressure. Very tough format in the fact that it was a sprint. You get out there, you try to win as many games as you can, and you bowled heads up against the best players on the planet. And, you know, there's no gimmies out here, especially on a condition that's a little bit challenging. It's not extremely easy, but it's not extremely tough. Just a little short. Shot. Jason got that ball trusted well to the left. No problem. Had full hand in it. Great rotation. That ball made the corner with some authority. Coming into the pocket just a little too steep and sends the four pin quicker around the seven pin. Check the water and the oil, please. 
actually he's just probably maneuvering the tape in the thumb hole because he wants to make sure that he probably put a new piece in there just wants to m make sure that he's got a good grip on this you can't afford to miss a spare in this position rather appropriate uh, bowling ball being at the naval base here well, a little red white and blue patriotic huh well he's a patriotic kind of guy anyway how about chris barnes outfit the other night wearing the red white and blue but he was a team usa member so being that they wore that type of outfit all the time it just fit here too perfectly wilson up by 11 come on steve well, the official PBA practice centers support the PBA and are the place to go to enjoy the sport of bowling. There are several hundred participating centers throughout the country. If you'd like a complete list, why well, log on to PBA.com. Steve did his job, got up on the right lane and just got refocused and said, I'm still in this game. I don't worry about this guy. If I bowl the best game I can bowl, I have a chance to win. Don't worry about your opponent. Just make great shots. Steve last night of what it would be like if he were to win. He said simply with a little smile crossing his face, unbelievable because it's been a struggle. Uh, Jason, last two shots, both have been. Nine, he left seven pin. Notice both shots got extremely close to the gutter and then charged back to the pocket really hard. One was just a little bit more to the left. This one right here was just a little bit more to the right in the pocket. We talked last week about the depth of the pocket. That wherever that ball enters is what it could leave. And one was a soft seven, one was a hard seven. And that was a hard ten and a pit for the big Jason Couch. Tim checked his feet, though. Wanted to make sure because earlier we saw Tony Reyes fouling. Well, you know, sometimes that plays against the psyche of the player. He just remembers that and he looks down just to make sure that he's not close. No miscues allowed in this match right here, so I think he's covering all his bases. Steve Wilson is up by 11 pins right now, and he's just sitting there looking away, thinking that, you know, come on, Jason, give me a break. Four consecutive championship appearances for that man, Jason Cup. What a role he's been on, huh? Third or better in four of the PBA's seven winter tour stops right here on ESPN. He's become one of the premier players out here, and you notice he's playing to the crowd. I mean, he uses that as an emotional elevation to keep him up because he knows now he's starting to get somewhat of an upper hand, or he wants that, and he's not going to let Steve Wilson get any slack at all. Wilson through the qualifying has been ahead of his opponents early on and from there things have gone pretty well. well that shot right there by Steve Wilson was whoo, that was extremely close to the gutter he showed no fear in that shot right there as he trusted it all the way to the first board had enough rotation on it and the ball just comes roaring back into the perfect spot of the pocket. out of Lake Worth, Florida in the finals looking for his third PBA national crown. 11 years of the tour in pro up against last week's winner, Jason Couch. 23 pin deficit in the finals four frames of the decisive third game last night. You've seen him, you've bowled against him. I mean, there just is no get up and quit in this man whatsoever. Probably the most intense player on the tour right now. Pete Weber owns a part of that title also. When Pete gets, gets it going like Jason does, they're both on that same level of intensity, which fuels them to perform their best. Championship match down by 11. Four in a row for Steve, looking for his third PBA title. I knew this was going to be a battle. Nobody's going to give this one away. I'll tell you what, um, both these players are on their games right now and they're mentally prepared to do the job. Oh. Out of trouble, that could have been disastrous for our man, Jason Couch. 
Wow. I'm going to tell you what. Look at when the ball comes into the pocket there. Great shot. The, actually, it was the three pin that comes off the wall and bumps the ten pin to knock it out to leave him with a, basically a routine spare. So you may as well count his blessings right there. A bit bemused. Well, that's a huge break for Steve Wilson because, I mean, they're both now extremely close. Steve Wilson is actually right now plus 32. The maximum score that Wilson can bowl is 280. Here's the replays a while ago whenever Steve Wilson threw those two shots. Both these shots were just perfectly thrown, and he trusted it out to the gutter. He said, I'm not going to tolerate anything less than the ball. Perfect spot of the pocket. Look at this one right here. He gets it in. He gets it in just a little bit more. See how close it is to the tighter? Here's another look at the shot before. Notice the ball is in about two boards, maybe two and a half boards from the one on the right lane, but the end result is a lot different. Watch how high the ball goes up into the pocket. Notice that it's almost on the head pin. The ball goes to the sideboard. The pin goes to the sideboard and comes back and chops, and chops the four pin off right there. Steve Wilson is here to play. He's got a five-bagger. Steve Wilson's in that zone, that proverbial zone you guys talk about. I stand corrected. Steve Wilson has a six-bagger right now. The best he can bowl is 280. Jason, the best he can have is 248. A lot of game left. Jason needs to dig extremely deep and summon out the best shots he can throw right now. And we got the big tomahawk coming across. Taking the seven pin out. He's one of the guys out here that does this on a regular basis. One pin to the wall and it comes right back. Notice on this shot right here, he trusts it all the way to the gutter because he knows it's gonna come back hard. The one pin goes all the way to the wall, into the seven. Look at that reaction. The intenseness on that. Look at the pin coming back across it, with some velocity that is us unmatched. Throw it good to go down. Great comment right there by Jason. Throw it good and they will go down. And that is exactly right. Well said, Jason. He was hollering. He knew that that ball was going to be close to the pocket. And the great player that he is, he's going to throw shots in the pocket. It's just a matter of whether the ball enters in the right spot of the pocket and gets the pins to go down. The shot here was trusted. Maybe a board in from the last shot on that lane. It's a little bit too high in the pocket. Notice that the three pin goes around the six and takes the ten. Well, he's disgusted on this shot, too, because he knows that it's slipping away. Well, we also talked about his record over the seven winter events on ESPN and his winter schedule, but and the way he has been so consistent in playing in the finals. And at some point, at some point, as you know as an athlete, you dig down and the tank is empty. It is a mental grind to go through what he's gone through here in the last few weeks. 280, his max score for Steve Wilson, worried to strike out. Six in a row so far. The, the big door can be closed right here with the strike. One time. He wants it. Don't forget, coming up next, Chattanooga against UNC Greensboro. Southern Conference basketball tournament action right here on your worldwide leader in sports. Hoop action. Chattanooga, UNC Greensboro, right after our live bowling. Thanks to all the folks here at the Naval Base, huh? At Little Creek, the great job that the Navy has done this week. Rockwell Hall, our home venue. They housed us this week and took very good care of us. It's been an excellent week. That shows the human side of Steve Wilson right there. As locked in as he is, the pressure just sometimes becomes insurmountable. So he knows that he has good control of this match, and I'll tell you what, he would have wanted that one to go down. The best he can bowl is 257. And actually, all he needs is six pins on the first ball here to win. So pretty clean shot.
Mr. Steve Wilson. Great performance this week. Ten years of PBA touring pro. It's his third national title right there. The 32-year-old right-hander out of Lake Worth, Florida. His first win since back in 66. He said last night, worried to win, it would be unbelievable because he has been struggling. He's your champion, the 2001 Battle at Little Creek. $20,000 for Steve Wilson, $10,000 for the runner-up Jason Couch. What a roll Jason has been on. Last week's winner at the Villages. For more information on the fall schedule as far as the PBA is concerned, log on to their website, pba.com. A major announcement coming up right after, well, March Madness and Hoops. And speaking of college basketball, next on your worldwide leader in sports, Southern Conference Basketball Action Tournament Style, Chattanooga against UNC Greensboro. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. So long, everybody.